Hi everyone, author Maria Desmondi. Welcome to our publisher series. I am super excited to be bringing this to you. We are going live today. If you are tuning in, we want you to stay around, listen to this interview. It's 15 minutes long with Rob Broder from Ripple Grove Press. He is going to be talking us to us today about what not to say to children's book publishers when you are querying, and if you don't know that term, you will before you know it, when you are submitting your manuscript script to um, when you're submitting your manuscript to a publisher so you're gonna find out a lot of really great helpful information here today all right we are bringing it started as soon as he joins us this is so exciting this series will last eight different weeks so we are interviewing eight different publishers and we will be here at different times, so be sure to check our website to see what time. And if you can't tune in, you will always be able to see the rebroadcast. And there is Rob. Awesome. Welcome, Rob. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. I Hi, sure can you can. hear me? I sure can. Can you hear me? Yes, thanks for having me. Absolutely. I've already um, introduced that we're doing a live interview here and that you are bringing information. Are you okay? Yeah, I, I scooted back and rolled over onto my cat. Just the life of a publisher. <laughs> life of a publisher working from your office. So ladies and gentlemen, um, Rob, I already introduced, you know, that you're from Ripple Grove Press that we're going to be interviewing you. But why don't you jump in real quick and tell us a little bit about your company and your publishing company because you have such a unique spin on what you're doing and I would love for everyone to hear about it. Well, we started Ripple Grove Press to make beautiful children's picture books. Uh, we started Ripple Grove Press from the ground up and that's what we've been doing uh, ever since. Uh, we receive submissions every day looking for that next story. Um, and hoping that our books reach as many homes and children as possible. We strive and to find... Rest... I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go we ahead. just strive to find a really beautiful story, a really well-told story, with, uh, and find an artist that really connects with the story and, and is able to bring the art uh, and the, the words to life. Absolutely. And I actually have a copy of one of your books here graduation day which is just stunning and so beautiful thank you and this is a unique story because it is a wordless picture book can you tell us briefly about this story uh sure well pio parda uh he illustrated the gentleman bat for us uh which was our first book which just came out uh three years ago october 1st and um and he's actually coming to portland tonight uh so we'll get to see him tomorrow and spend some time with him uh he uh basically sent us an entire pencil sketch of the entire book. And the second we saw it, we were like, let's make this happen. And uh, we were excited to work on that project with them. And we love, Amanda and I love wordless books. And uh, the message of the story really spoke to us that she took a negative action and just quietly made it into something really beautiful. It's a beautiful story. And um, so I want everyone to check out Graduation Day, absolutely, by Ripple Grove Press. So let's jump into our interview today, Rob, because I know people are excited to hear what you have to give for them. Okay. So we talked about <clears throat> querying, and I said some people may not know what a query is, and a query is basically submitting your picture book. Now, you come up with 10 different things not to do, not to say. Let's jump in with number one. Okay, number one uh, on the 10 things not to say in your query letter, especially uh, in parentheses to a small independent press, which would be don't start your query letter with a, hello, my name is so-and-so. Um, I just, that name to me, I'm gonna see your name at the end of your letter. Uh, I'm going to see your name when I read your story. And then if I really like your story and I don't know your name, you can be sure I will figure out your name if your story really speaks to me and give you a call. So I never, I, it's not necessary to put, uh, dear Ripple Grove Press, hello, my name is. So that would be number one. Excellent. And why shouldn't, for number two, why shouldn't we tell you that you're going to love our story? 
Number two, don't tell me uh, that you love you, that you uh, that I will love your story because I I guess I know why you're going to say that, but it's best for let me just make my own decision. I feel like when I read that, I'm not going to love the story. Um, it's kind of like you know you must see that movie. You're going to love it, and it's like I'll I'll, I'll make the the choice whether I'm going to like that movie. And it's the same thing. Like uh, I've wrote down about an ice cream flavor. Like I I'll let me try it and I'll make it. So I always, when I see that, I'm like, okay, you're a little, uh, it's not setting the right tone, I guess. I think that's excellent. And Rob, wouldn't you say in the first few sentences, if you're starting to feel that salesy pitch from this letter, are you going to continue reading the entire letter? Or are you kind of over it? Yeah, I'll continue reading it. Uh, it's just, yeah, I don't know why you're telling me I like it. You're submitting it with the hopes I'm going to like it. So you don't, I read so many queries every day that I just want to get to the juice. I just want to get to your story and what it's about and then move to your story. So when you tell me like, hello, my name is, and I'm going to love your story, you're wasting time because I spend so much time reading submissions. So every word and every sentence you choose is time taken away from me. That's fantastic advice. And I have, we have some live viewers, so give us some hearts and click some likes if you're in, <laughs> enjoying this advice because this is going to save you time and getting a publisher. Let's go to number three. Don't tell me your child loves this story. It goes along the same lines, right? Yes. Uh, your child, uh, of course, is going to like it. Um, why would they not like it? You wrote it. You wrote it. You're telling it to them. You're hanging out in the kitchen or snuggling uh, in bed. Uh, what's not to like? It's awesome. It's fun. It's creative. So just because they like it, it doesn't mean it's going to have mass appeal. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, I'm going to, you know, a publisher is going to want to look at it. Uh, but I, I'm glad to know that. But you don't need to tell me that in your letter. Um, yeah, I just, when I see that, I, I, you know, you're enthusiastic to share it with me, I understand, but it's, again, you're wasting time in your letter telling me that your child really, or your children really like this story and it's so special. Let me just take it in. Let me just really enjoy the story without all of this uh, extra sentences that are in the query that I don't need to see. How about number four? Uh, don't tell me your story is whimsical. This tells me off the bat that your story rhymes, and it also tells me that there's some type of a tempo that I'm supposed to to uh, follow, and usually I don't. Um, I Very large percentage, when I see that it's whimsical, I do feel like it rhymes or it's some type of nursery rhyme, and I'm not interested in nursery rhymes, and I'm uh, the rhyming... I very rarely like the rhyming on the submissions that we get because they're just off. It's not, uh, they're forcing their rhymes. Uh, it's not flowing with the story. Sometimes I really like the story and I just wish it didn't rhyme because I like, <laughs> and they, I'm gonna... I like their concept and the, and the story, but then you'd have to rewrite the whole thing. So, um, yeah. And I'm going to pause right now to let everyone know listening. We've got a lot of live viewers right now chiming in. We're with Rob Roeder. He's from Ripple Grove Press. He's a publisher, and he's talking about what not to say when you're submitting a picture book in this case. But I, a lot of these can go along with um, different types of books that you're submitting. And one of the things that's repetitive, we're on step number four he just talked about. Basically, it's cut to the chase. Tell us what your story is about. And remember that this is you're, you're selling your story. But again, you want to be very professional about it, which leads us into number five. Number five really talks about professionalism. Can you share number five with us? Um, do not send pictures of your child or pet uh, who have inspired the story. Um, we do get submissions uh, in our inbox and in the, our PO box where they've taken so much time showing me pictures of their dog on the trip they went and their beach and the costumes they dressed and sitting on the couch all snuggly I don't know if you've gone into a bookstore recently, but those books are not uh, being published. They're being self-published, but they're not being published by, uh, we're just a traditional publisher and we're just not, I'm not interested in uh, having real photographs um, 
of your dog in certain situations and so certain scenarios. Uh, and the same with your children too. I, I get submissions with your actual children and um, I'm not quite sure where, they're not reading children's picture books because I yeah. don't read many books with their actual children in the books. So I don't. And that goes along with, you shouldn't be sending illustrations either unless you are an illustrator, you are a professional exactly. artist. Um, so let's move to number six. Do not tell me this story is similar to Dr. Seuss meets Alice in Wonderland. Um, when you tell me your story is similar to Dr. Seuss meets Alice in Wonderland or any other type of specific um, old time stories, it shows me that your story is not original. It's not creative. And um, it doesn't really make me... Uh, get excited when I start reading your story. I do read your story. I read every submission, but when I do see Dr. Seuss, Dr. Seuss has been done. It's already, it's already out there. There's dozens, That's a dozens lot to of Dr. Love Seuss to. books you can buy. So I'm not really interested in um, publishing something that has a um, cat in the hat type Dr. Seuss rhyming uh, funny scenario. I'd rather hear something completely original and different. Absolutely. And, you know, we have viewers. Go ahead and comment below. Let us know where you are um, watching from. We'd love to hear where in the country you're watching from. And if you're just tuning in, this information is valuable. Basically, Rob is teaching us that you can write a professional query letter and you can take these tips that he's giving you and you can really save yourself a lot of time and energy and getting a good letter together so that your manuscript is actually read and considered. Considered is the key here. So we are going through 10 tips and now we are on tip number seven. Don't tell me you have a series for this character. Why? When you tell me you have a series for the character um, and then you go ahead and start telling me, I'm not, uh, being a small press, I'm not really interested in series right now. I'm interested in making one beautiful book if for some reason, uh, and if it's a home run, then we can talk about bringing that character back to life. But I'll, I will get lots of queries about Sparky goes to the zoo and Sparky goes to the Hamptons and Sparky goes to the North Pole. All of those I'm assuming are fairly similar type stories too, where something just happens and uh, it's just not something I'm looking for. It doesn't, to me, that it has like five other stories in your head really doesn't do anything for me. I want to read, if you have Sparky Goes to the Zoo, I want to read your best Sparky story you have and just send me one and then we'll move on. One. And my sister just said, hi, hi, Stace. Oh, Glad hey, someone's sister. listening. <laughs> you know, the key here too is to do your homework. Every single publisher has different submission guidelines. Every single publisher has different needs. And I get people who will send me cookbooks I do, our company does not publish cookbooks. So please do your homework. Just don't be sending out your manuscript to anyone who will read it. Really Agreed. do your homework. Agreed. Let's go to number eight. Um, don't tell me this is a different version of the Three Little Pigs, which sounds very similar to the Dr. Seuss tip, correct? It's similar, um, yes, but this one is more of, um, you know, uh, the Three Little Pigs, it could be the Three Little Ducks. So I get a lot of stories like that. And, uh, you know, Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad uh, Bobcat. You know, I, I just, it's just not something I'm interested in. I want something really different and original. Um, I've rec recently received a submission where it was, this is not the title that was received. I made this up. If you give an ostrich a scone, is very similar to if you give a mouse a cookie and then I go in, and I read it and it's like the same mm. tempo and the same scenario. And I don't know why, first of all, I, yeah, I don't know why someone would want to think I'm going to grab that because that's not yeah. probably that's, sounding that's illegal. That's a great tip. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> again, you're, you're wasting A lot of this is time. really, really yeah. good. Yeah. So. You're wasting your own time in coming up with a story that's, you know, going to sound unoriginal. So let's go into number nine, which is don't, don't send your story with page breaks or illustration notes. So this is really key because we, as publishers, we don't want to know what's happening with the illustrations because there no, is no illustrator. If you are submitting a straight 
manuscript, there is no illustrator. So tell us a little bit more about this tip. When someone submits to me and, and the second they're the page billing me, what words go on what page, um, it's very distracting. It, um, the illustrator will decide what words and how we see it folding. Okay. That's good. And we are on step Am I losing 10. you? I'm getting disconnected. No, we've got you. Uh-oh, maybe we did lose you for just a second here. We are going to get, oh, here he comes. It looks like his connection is going in and out. Let's give him a second here. Um, he's going to go into, Rob is talking about 10 tips right now. Um, as far as what not to say to children's book publishers when you are submitting. He is on step number 10, which is don't send ABC or counting books. So I want to hear a little bit more about this one. Are you back, Rob? There we go. because there's just so many choices. I'm just looking for something back. I'm not sure. really fresh and different. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're, you're back. It's going in and out. Uh-oh. I think we might have lost Rob. On the okay, good. So number 10 is um, you're looking for something fresh and different. And I think this is just really good advice to go back to what is the publisher looking for? Rob from Ripple Grow, Grow Press, Rob's company, publishing company is not looking for ABC and counting books. So you wanna do your homework, absolutely. So Rob, you're going in and out. So I'm gonna kind of wrap this up. We went through all 10 steps, which was amazing. And for those of you who are tuning in right now, we would love for you to, you know, Go back and find out what Rob has to say. 10 different tips from him at his publishing company, Ripple Grow Press, on what not to say to publishers. This has been an amazing, helpful, filled interview, Rob. Thank you so much. Um, and what can you do if you're still listening? Well, you can tune in next week. We're going to be talking next week with Robin Barone. She has a very unique publishing company called Diplomat Books. And she will be talking about how um, she is using her platform to inspire curiosity in children. So Rob, if you're back, I wanna thank you so much for being here with us today and for sharing your expertise. Thanks, Rob. I can't hear you, but thank you. <laughs> thank 